good afternoon everybody in uh, today's presentation i will be primarily focusing on isotopes in teeth as a novel forensic identification of identification method i am dr preeti vinayak medical in the department of oral pathology and microbiology my co-author is dr ulla shetty who is an associate professor in the department of forensic medicine uh, moving over to the next uh, slide identification of unknown bodies poses a lot of challenges in terms of ethical medical legal and civil reasons usually in such cases bodies will be identified by fingerprinting comparison of anti and post mortem dental and medical radiographs or by dna analysis of the tissues now what happens is with the, when there is lack of clues it leads to the search for information about year of birth or geographic origin of the victim so as to limit the search for possible matches that time these age estimation methods come into a role so anthropological examiners they examine the skeletonized bodies and they focus on the changes primarily that are seen in the teeth and the bone so based on the age dependent alterations in human tissue it gives us estimate of the person's age usually at death now these different methods if you see the morphological methods though they are used till today they give almost an error ratio of about plus or minus 10 years next comes the aspartic acid resumization technique which is more better which are, hello i'm not audible are Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, ma'am. Please. Yes. Okay. Then comes this aspartic acid, uh, aspartic acid resumization technique, which, with further precision of almost plus or minus five years of error, gives us age estimation. So the method that comes into picture, you know, which could help in help the investigators to rule out the possible matches to provide information about the diet the residence patterns of unidentified individuals by examining the various body tissues that could be in the form of teeth hair nails and bones is isotope analysis so the increasing accessibility to various personal uh, registers in many countries okay for that matter makes the date of birth of an individual even more important than the actual age at death when it comes to identifying unknown victims so that becomes very important when unknown victims are there mutilated bodies mass disasters or heinous crimes are committed moving on to the next slide so here i review on the isotopic analysis of teeth in forensic applications so what is in brief i will tell about isotopes isotopes nothing but it means same place the elements are rotating in the same place and the stable isotopes are the ones which are usually analyzed and they do not decay like your radio isotope so these isotopes in the past were used for geological information systems for in hydrological systems but their forensic application is also is widely used so first initially how the procedure goes about is we generate isoscapes what are isoscapes isoscapes are nothing but like reference maps or landscape maps so these landscape maps usually will be generated via geographic information system to generate reference isotopic landscapes that is isoscapes and they can be generated for a multiple materials example is water soil and tissues which tissues it could be teeth bone hair and nails and probably for a number of isotope systems example is carbon nitrogen oxygen sulfur strontium and even lead so this will be helpful for multiple isotope applications where overlapping isotopic profiles will exist so we can narrow down the region of origin so basically the five bio five bio elements that is hydrogen carbon nitrogen oxygen along with trace elements like strontium are the ones that are usually analyzed now i'll just tell you the major the technique or the methodology used in this isotope analysis is nothing but irms technique which is nothing but your isotopic ratio mass spectroscopy what is happening here the samples or the isotopes to analyze them they are subjected to an elemental analyzer wherein uh, they are first simplified with simple gas forms that are present and which are those if you have 
nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and uh, sulfur dioxide, which is produced by combustion method, whereas hydrogen and carbon monoxide are subjected to high temperature methods and via interface. They go on to the ionizing chamber where they can be fractionated and studied. Recent one more technique has come into picture, which is nothing but a new method, which is called as IRIS. It is nothing but isotope ratio infrared spectroscopy. It relies on the absorption of light by the different isotopologues for that particular material. Now, moving on to the isotopic analysis of the samples and inferences. Now, to predict the geographic origin of an unknown sample and to identify the resident patterns of the remains based on their isotopic signatures of bone, teeth, hair, and nails, you know, we can analyze or we can evaluate or predict the model as to from where this person has originated or his workplace, residence patterns. Now, because uh, different tissue types give us a different snapshots of time. Example, childhood diet and residence is reflected by the teeth. Diet and location for the past 10 to 20 years of life will be reflected by the bone, whereas a more recent travel history or resident patterns will be reflected by the hair and nail analysis. Now, if you look at this, the hair and nails are the ones which are most promising because uh, they are the ones which will be giving us a record of the recent history of that particular person. But however, in unidentified remain cases, you know, where hair and nails may not preserve or be retained following autopsy or some kind of skeletal analysis, the only material left behind will be teeth and bone. Now, comparing the these two tissues, that is teeth and bone, if you see bone is constantly undergoing remodeling that at a different rate in comparison to teeth, teeth is a more static, a dense tissue and there is no post, uh, post premineralization, there will be no remodeling. Next comes to the diagenic changes. What are diagenic changes? Nothing but changes that occur with relation to the environment. These diagenic changes are seen more in the case of bone tissue, again due to the increased porosity of bone in comparison to teeth. What else? What are the other advantages? What else we can see here is, unlike the carbon isotopes of bone collagen, which are biased towards a dry tree protein, the bioappetite forms that is present in these teeth or hydroxyapatite, they provide a record of the consumption of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins not used in tissue synthesis of bone collagen. So that means the bioappetite reflects a whole form of a diet of that particular individual than this alone. In addition to oxygen isotopes of the carbonate in the bioappetites, it usually reflects the resident patterns of that particular individual based on the tissue formation of the tooth at childhood. So that means uh, the teeth provides us a reflection of the residence patterns that form during early childhood, whereas the bone gives a residence history during the last several years of life. So comparing all these things, the teeth prove to be a better sample if available compared to other tissues. Now, this, is, this slide again tells us how the predictive models can be done. Here we are seeing materials, methods, that is isotopic analysis of water, plants, food, and the tissues that could be present at the site, example, hair, teeth, and bones. Now you can see there C, N, carbon and nitrogen, oxygen ratios. The number represents the total isotopic composition of that particular tissues. So analyzing the collagen from the bone and the water component. Water component, I will again explain in the next slide how it is typically related to geographical origin and the appetite crystals will generate a database. I'll form an isoscape. So I have the data set with me, which will narrow down my search to see, okay, this is a diet pattern, this could be his possible residence patterns and habits and others which will correlate in identifying the human remains and help the investigators to solve that particular case. So it is usually carbon and nitrogen which give reflect the diet of an individual and oxygen and strontium isotope which reflect the geographic origin of that particular individual. So if you can see in uh, this particular slide where I'm uh, talking about carbon as such. So how carbon is going to help in identification is such. The stable isotopes of carbon, they get incorporated into the plants during photosynthesis. That is 
the oxygen, the combined carbon dioxide is formed, plants take it during photosynthesis. What happens is the animals which consume these plants and humans which in turn consume these animals or plants, what do they have? They form the samples, these isotopes, they're incorporated into the carbonate in the mineral phase of the tooth, such giving us an information about the herbivorous nature of the diet. So whether the diet was predominantly composed of a C3 plant or a C4 plant. Now what is a C3 and C4? C3 plants are nothing but plants which are mostly like potatoes, beets and sugar. They grow in a more, they require more of water because they lose a lot of water during photosynthesis. Whereas C4 plants are nothing but the ones which are growing in hot, arid conditions and they form your sugarcane and corn. So based on this diet pattern, I will tell, okay, this is a herbivorous form of a diet. Furthermore, I have C13 and C14, again, predicting the geographic origin. C14, the atmospheric C14, okay, that is present, it combines with the oxygen and carbon dioxide is produced. What happens is the C14 of an atmospheric level almost remains constant throughout. So when I analyze the carbon ratios or isotope ratios from these human tissues and analyze it with the isoscapes of the carbon atom, I can tell, okay, this particular person belonged to probably this geographic origin again to you know, possibly reduce the possible searches. Next, we move on how nitrogen uh, isotopes are going to help us. Similarly, when I have these nit nitrogen isotopes, for example, N15 and N14, in the collagen of bone and dentine, they also can utilize to reveal dietary information, especially if you see N15, you know, that is a structural protein it's in bone and collagen. It reflects the relative level of meat protein in our diet. So a decrease in the N15 values based on the stable isotopic analysis of teeth, which is taken from a victim's body, categorizes that particular individual more to be a primary consumer, a more like a vegan. Also, one more thing, this N15 values uh, reflects the V, can help me in analyzing the weaning period of breastfed children. Because uh, N15 values approximate, uh, you know, they are three parts per million higher than their mothers in children who are, you know, breastfed. So tooth dentine laid down in that infant during this breastfeeding period, they will retain enriched N15 values throughout the individual life and since it does not readily turn over. So this is how N15 helps in uh, determination of the diet as well as a weaning period. Next, moving on to the role of oxygen isotopes. The stable isotope signatures of uh, teeth, you know, of oxygen, they are well established to the proxies of the climate. How is it? It is the ox isotopic oxygen is incorporated into the body mainly through drinking water. So when we take up a, a water, that oxygen isotope of 16 and 18, they get incorporated into the hydroxyapatite crystals. What next? These crystals from enamel being the most stable, they would give a precise information about the environment during the period of crown formation in the teeth. So this is how oxygen isotopes analyze. Moving on to strontium. Strontium always knows where you have been. Why is it said so? Because strontium ratios, they provide a unique fingerprint to the geology of an area. Since strontium readily, <coughs> sorry, substitutes for calcium in the inorganic hydroxyapatite crystals and it can attain relatively high concentrations. Usually, <coughs> the strontium isotope compositions measured in the human teeth will reflect the average strontium isotope composition that was ingested as a child again because of the immobile nature of strontium and calcium in the teeth after formation. Next, let us go on to few of the forensic case studies <coughs> uh, which were analyzed uh, in the article by Jason and Bartlick in 2019. One case which they discussed, which was very interesting, which was solved by the help of isotopic analysis where teeth, bone and hair helped this. A human skull was found in the desert of South Carolina in 2010. The biologic profiling of that particular uh, case revealed that they thought it to be uh, that of a young Hispanic individual. The DNA profiling was done coupled with extensive missing search record was not any, was not conclusive. It was 
further subjected to the investigators in 2017 for isotopic analysis of the teeth and the bone. So the investigators had one question in mind. See, this case determining the travel history of that particular individual. They were not sure whether the individual or the dissident was Latin American or a US born. So what did they do? They did the carbon isotope analysis of bone and teeth and amyl were uh, studied, which revealed the diet of that particular individual to be a mixed diet. That is a combination of C3 and a C4 diet, which correlates more with the weather conditions or geographical environmental conditions of US American rather than Latin American. Further, their search did not stop at this level. They went to analyze the hair samples, which could you know, recently be analyzed and that further subjecting it to further isotope analysis they reduced down the case to the uh, individual being that of a US American than being a uh, other Hispanic or some, some other region of origin. So this is one case, you know, which they have uh, used this isotopic analysis. Another two case studies, which I will quote here, was one William Bass donated skeletal collection by Nicholas Herman in 2015. Along with several iso other isotopic forensic studies, he concluded that the dental enamel isotope oxygen values were overall reflective of the individual's birth location, whereas your hair, keratin, hydrogen values were influenced by the more of the individual's death location. Another study in 2013 was done on the tooth appetite and bone collagen of individuals which were buried at Arafa Cemetery in Pakistan and the cemetery at Ur in Mesopotamia for strong strontium isotopic issues. I told you that strontium is used a fingerprint of the geological location of the person. So this suggested a substantial variation in the strontium values of Harappa individuals, which points out to a foreign place of origin in contrast to the individuals who were buried at uh, Ur Cemetery, suggesting a local origin. In conclusion, what this paper tries to put forth is these isotopic and elemental characteristics of human bone, teeth, hair, or other, they prove to be useful biomarkers for forensic investigators. These biomarkers trace the locations and movements of individuals and aid in identification of human remains. Unlike hair and nails, most tissues they do not record in a linear fashion where a person was or what they ate. Signature, signatures of teeth, tissues, other than teeth, they keep changing. Whereas these samples of teeth, they record our birthplace for the rest of our lives. Thank you. These are my references.